views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. I am your host, Florissa Bello. It is a pleasure to have you join us on this beautiful afternoon. We trust that you and your loved ones are well and staying safe. In today's Bejas Fireside Chat conversation, we welcome visionary leader, marketer, and the founder of We Are All Human, a nonprofit organization who is devoted to diversity and inclusion as a way to achieve equity, convene the network of progressive leaders, inspire and facilitate a collective action. It is a pleasure to welcome back to Vegas Fashionistas TV, Latina Trailblazer and Mexicana, Claudia Romo Elman. Claudia, thank you so much for joining us today. Hola, muchas gracias. Thank you so very much. It is a pleasure to have you back at our studio. Uh, now it is our home studio. And um, please tell us more about yourself and what it is that you do. Thank you so much. It is a pleasure to be back. I am a marketer. I, I, I was raised and born as a marketer. I, I have been doing the same for 25 years, different organizations, particularly global organizations. Um, the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, UNICEF, the UN refugee agencies, always trying to help them to motivate people and win the hearts and minds of people to pay attention to things that matter that they have not seen. Um, in this case, 25 years of experience culminated in the creation of We Are All Human. The reason why I started this organization, I think is more relevant today than ever before. Um, I, I absolutely believe that the world is making progress. We're in the good trajectory. Even if you're bombarded by news that are like, oh, so negative. If you look at the macro data, the world has never been better. If you're a baby girl flying in the sky, there's never been a better chance for you to have education, electricity, access to choices, elections, whatever you name. And yet there was one or two things that really started concerning me that could derail that progress. And that was a divisive language was getting by far more traction than I liked. And between that and climate change, for example, I decided to step out of the United Nations and to do an organization that reminded people precisely of that. We are all human. Because believe it or not, we forget. We forget and we start thinking of people as if they would be a political party or a race or a color or a, you know, a social status. And if there's one thing that COVID has done is humanize us again and remind us that there is no distinction. All these distinctions are artificial. If the virus is going to come, it's going to come for everybody. It doesn't matter really where you are, of course. We're in the same storm, but we're not in the same boat. So we suffer this differently. But the purpose of the organization is precisely to create more in inclusive environments so that everybody can be their best selves. And that, again, that we can actually not forget that we belong to the same human family. And therefore, every one of us has the same chance for a, you know, like an equal opportunity and a fair chance. COVID has literally affected each and one of us from, from the community to to mom and pops, uh, small businesses and minority owned businesses. And, and I, I, I want you to tell me more about the Hispanic star, um, because I know that you also started an action, a call to action, Hispanic star call to action. Please tell us how you were able to put that, that mobilizing that Hispanic star movement. So everything started with a, a question. 
How do we move a community that is powerful but feels weak, that is huge but thinks small? How do we move a community that is invisible to be visible and from negative to positive and from takers to makers? How do we do that? Because that's who we are. Mm -hmm. And so we created a campaign, a symbol, and actually started with the creation of uh, a symbol that could unify us all, uh, a Hispanic star, because that's who we are. First of all, we are 100% American but we are also 100% Hispanic. So this symbol symbolizes both the star for the American flag that we are, uh, you know, like we're, we are dear to, but also the Enye, which is the most of the, of the Hispanic symbols. <laughs> and if you put them together, you have a star. And if you think about the rainbow and the power that the rainbow has had on the LGBTQ is to allow people to... To, uh, to identify, but also to uh, for allies to say, I support you, I respect you, here's my t-shirt, I will put the rainbow everywhere. And we didn't have that. We are a community of 26 different countries of origin that are divided and fragmented, and we need to be singing from the same song sheet. We had everything ready, eight months of preparation to launch a campaign, just like the way that you would do a normal marketing campaign to launch a product. We had the uh, White Sox Stadium, uh, we were launching at the opening day of the Major League of Baseball and boom, COVID happened. Three weeks, pff, we had to reshift and repurpose everything. Our, uh, our platforms, our networks, our distribution channels and put the Hispanic stars in action. We had to change our campaign of changing perception for a campaign to supporting those that are affected the most, which are us, our small businesses, our entrepreneurs, and our independent workers. And we created this framework where we had to be unified. So in a way, COVID helped us to do what we needed to do for a long, long time, which is act together, act as a community. And when I started looking at that uh, the attraction of people willing to do more, we put together a Hispanic response and recovery plan and a number of Hispanic star hubs that at the national level are taking action and are bringing communities and local authorities together so that we can activate for one another. I see the movement on social media, which is great. And I just love it. I love each and every part of it because you, you have 10, I believe. Oh, no, we are 30 right now. Uh, there are 30 hubs. They're, <laughs> they're sorry, getting, <laughs> they're getting, here's the thing. The thing is that Hispanics, we are ready. Yeah. We've never been stronger. We've never been ready. We just need a platform to unify and showcase that we want to work together and that we want to do things. And if you actually just give a framework of people, then beautiful things happen. I saw it when I launched the sustainable development goals that everybody that was doing things on gender, on climate change, they unite and you just put a framework of action. And so the Hispanic Star Hubs, we have more than 30, 10 of them have been already taking action all across the ground. So in the Southern tech, Texas, our national director of the host, Perla Tamez, who's amazing, a powerful Latina, Hispanic star. All of us, Hispanic stars, Hispanic stars. So Perla Tamez, a Hispanic star, 10,000 despensas distributed in 20 different cities all across Southern Texas, mobilizing trucks and trucks and trucks of food all across the state. Um, Miami, putting honoring healthcare, uh, healthcare uh, workers and honoring the people that in Miami are in the front lines, distributing products and equipment and food. Denver taking action and paying the rent of those restaurants that the restaurant owners that cannot pay it anymore and then distributing products. And guess what happens when you have one and then and two and then and three, then you have 10 and then they have 20 and then companies start saying, I want to help you and I want to give you product and I want to give you food. And that's how you start actually getting critical mass. And yeah. what we have is the reaching point of getting critical mass for Hispanics to be able to support Hispanics and support others and join forces, for example, with our African-American brothers and sisters to mm -hmm. say, together we can provide change. Hispanic Star Call to Action is currently working with uh, corporations who have been very instrumental to the initiative uh, Call to Action for the Hispanic Star. Tell us more about the um, the additional organizations that are jumping in to execute all these mobilization from city to city. They see growth. I mean, like every company that has a marketing department and has data 
understands that Hispanics are the only way to grow their businesses. It is not that we have to do anything. The problem here is that we ourselves, we have not you know, like realize our own power. We have not taken the mirror yet, but companies have. They have seen the power and they have seen how, you know, like there's no way that you can hire anybody in the future without tapping into the Hispanic community. There's no way that you can grow selling products without the Hispanic community. You know, like our numbers are spectacular and they're increasingly so, even with COVID. COVID demonstrated, as a fact, let's talk about that for a second. Um, COVID has disproportionately affected Hispanics. 1,000%. We are the most affected at the health level. We die the highest. We have the most, uh, the highest index of high of mortality in every state. Um, we are economically affected the most uh, because one in every four businesses are at the brink of closing. We have more small businesses than any other community, and small businesses are the ones that are most affected. And the other people that work work in those industries that were affected the most: service industry, uh, uh, the gig economy, the sharing economy. So we're we're affected by every every corner. This pandemic affected us the most at the health level, at the economic level. Then we're also disproportionately exposed because we're running the front lines. 19 million Hispanics running the country. Thank you, Hispanics. You're welcome, America. You're running. We're, we're in the food service. We're in the health service. We're in the truck driving service. We deliver your food. We take care of you. We take care of your children. And where is the big thank you? And where is the big, you know, like response to all of us? Where is the solution to say like, oh my God, how am I going to help you at the health level, at the economic level? At, you know, like at saying thank you so very much for the tribute that you're paying. We're there. We're providing the food. Not only at the, you know, like not only at the food uh, service uh, supply chain but also the food uh, like at the farmer level right. and so what we know is that we're disproportionately affected so we needed to raise that hand and say like think 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 here's a problem you need to bring incredible solutions if so adequate solutions to this incredible problem but number two is that hispanics are also disproportionately equipped to deal with this pandemic because we're resourceful, because we're imaginative, because we've been punched so many times that we know how to come back faster. And we have, you know, like those businesses that were closed, they're going to open and we're going to go like, whoop, whoop. so our unemployment levels are going to be higher. Uh, our unemployment levels have been highest, but we're going to see the rebound faster as well. So all the companies, all what companies see is like, I am affected as well. And if I treat Hispanics properly as employees, as consumers, and in the community, they're going to help me to come back faster. So it's not a very hard sell. It is what we really need to do, all of us as a Hispanic community, is drink the Kool-Aid. We are powerful. We are beautiful. We are strong. We're going to come back faster. But we need to be united. And we need to be aware of our own power so that we can use it properly. And if there's one thing that Black Lives Matter is showing is the power of unity and the power of actually being able to express what we need and bring allies to the table. And the way that we're support, showing support to the African-American community, it's going to come our term. And we should be ready. We should be ready to be at the conversation level and say, yep. I've been, uh, I've, been, I've been facing discrimination as well. I've been facing discrimination when I go to interviews. I've been facing racism when I go and ask for, a, you know, like for, for capital. I, I've been denied credit. I've been that person as well. And this is the time for all of us to really make sure that we bring systemic change to the table. So the Hispanic star is just a symbol of unification for all of us Hispanics to know that we are that. Hispanics, that united, we're strong, that we can make change, but we just have to drink the Kool-Aid and unify because unidos, we're strong and fragmented, we're not. How do you think that we can move forward much stronger from what we're doing now? Every one of us is responsible or able to create a movement and to be empowered. Every one of us should feel as a Hispanic star. This is not our thing. The Hispanic star is our thing is our framework, is our opportunities, our uh, brand to, to represent Latino empowerment that represents pride and unity. So if you feel what I'm saying is that you're a star 
and that you were able to bring other people to feel that and see that and be part of a bigger thing. I don't know whether we have a movement, but we can create a movement if we all of us activate. So if you feel that you're tired of not being seen, if you feel that you can actually recognize how wonderful it would be if we're the last generation that is not seen, not heard, not valued, and that you're ready to take a step so that the next generations are fully paid, fully respected, and fully seen. If you feel that, join us. Be part of the Hispanic Star. Be part of a, a change that is happening, whether you want to be part of it or not, it will happen. Hispanics, this is a time for us. Win for Hispanics. Win with Hispanics. And join forces with others so that we can have allies. This is our time. We've never been stronger. We just need to take action and be assertive about how powerful we are. And the Hispanic Star is going to mobilize a number of companies and people and movement and stores. And we are willing to see this symbol everywhere. The Hispanic Heritage Month is a beautiful opportunity for all of us to see it, to see how we can transform that month that really doesn't really mean much into something that means everything for us, where we can really be proud of the incredible contributions of Hispanics for centuries. The Hispanics in baseball, the Hispanics in astronomy, the Hispanics in academia, the Latinos, Latinx, Latinas, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. It's not even our name, it's an invention of someone of the census 70 years ago. So now that they call us that way, let's make the best of it. Let's give it meaning. Let's give it meaning that means growth, that means power, that means you know, future. So this Hispanic Heritage Month, join forces, do something that is actually going to change the history of our community. Be part of that, believe that, see it, see it the way I see it. I've seen it before. I've seen it through 25 years of working in different organizations. I've seen communities come out and thrive with nothing compared to what we have as a community. The only thing that we need to do is just move and take action and be Hispanic stars. We will take a quick break and when we return, Claudia will share how the Hispanic star call to action is not only assisting the community, but also Hispanic owned businesses. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Claudia, you've, you've started the movement of mobilizing all these hubs. Can you talk to us more about the call to action and um, what these hubs... The Hispanic Star hubs are meant to be entities, multi-sector, multi-industry, multi-profession of people that want to get together to advance the community. Everybody has the same objective, which is to advance Hispanics so that we can all be seen, heard, and valued and have an equal chance in everything we want to do. So we have right now more than 30 Hispanic hubs that have been um, uh, that have been popping up in different parts of the country. We want to actually get to 100, and I think that we can do it. Every hub has a leader, and the leadership is, um, you know, like is bringing more people together so that they can have 100, 200, 300 members each. They have a power to decide on what actions they want to take that will affect their local priorities. So in different cases, different people have done different things depending on the, the needs that, that they have at the local level. Now we're focused on COVID, bringing dispensers, bringing food, bringing equipment. In New York, our Hispanic Star Hub decided that, uh, that one of the issues that we could tackle is to allow for children that cannot enter the school online uh, to understand why. They decided it was not for internet access, it was because of the lack of routers. So they're fundraising to provide 10,000 routers for children 
in the Bronx and in Queens that otherwise don't have an opportunity to go online because their mother is using the router to work or because uh, they don't have the money to buy a second one or a primary one. So every one of the hubs have different priorities. We at the central level, we provide them with seed funding, we provide them with an opportunity to get to know each other, to bring more members, to connect them to corporations so that we can equip them so that every one of us has an opportunity to join wherever you are to be part of a movement that wants to join, that wants to advance Hispanics. Hispanic star hubs um, are available for everybody and we want to invite people to be ambassadors and to take action at the local level by being hubs. How can someone participate or become a member at any of these hubs? Absolutely simple. You sign up for hispanicstar.org and you say, I want to be part of a hub. Uh, they're in LinkedIn as well. All the groups are, diff are in LinkedIn, but just express your opinion, become a Hispanic Star Ambassador, be part of something, do something for your community, and then join at the local level with a number of incredible people that are, you know, like that you might not even know. How long have you been able to 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 have these first 100 hubs? We want to have 100 hubs by the end of the year. We have 30 that were born in five weeks. We do, do due diligence. We provide, we, we equip them. We provide them with seed funding. We, inter, we, you know, we interact them with each other. We provide an induction and then there we go, ready to go. Where do you see the hubs uh, mobilizing after? COVID. The hubs have been massively supported by companies that want to have a regional or a local footprint as well. So companies like Procter & Gamble or IBM or Cargill or Shackley or Beam Suntory, all of them have said, or PepsiCo have said, I want to make sure that I am able to support Hispanics through hubs because the traditional channels that normally people have for distribution of goods do not reach Hispanics. So if you're if you look at the footprint of, for example, Feeding America, you will see that they are very heavy in New Orleans or very heavy in Alabama, but that's not where we are. We're in Miami, we're in Los Angeles, we're in the Bronx. So we needed to provide an alternative and then go and shake the tree of companies and say like, hi, hi if you wanted to reach us, you're not reaching us. So let's actually help you, help Feeding America, help other organizations so that we can be of help and we can be a distribution channel now that we need most. If you translate that to later after COVID, when we don't need hand sanitizer, but we will need education, when we don't need, uh, you know, like products to help us with COVID or food, but we're able to actually have a conversation and a distribution channel, we're gonna be able to tackle local priorities that will help us to get scholarships, internships, apprenticeships, mentorships, where we are able to have local com local companies support local communities and bring Hispanics actually as part of their workforce to provide Hispanics a network of support so that we can be helping each other, buying from each other, mentoring each other. So I think that the very important thing to know is that the Hispanic community is empowered to change the future of the Hispanic community. We just need to be organized, to communicate, organize, and then mobilize so that we can make it happen. And with companies as a real win and win situation, I think that we're in a really great shape to really understand that this is the time for Hispanics and we're not gonna let this opportunity go. Could you talk to us more about the partnerships with additional organization aside from the sponsors? and the corporations? A very important part of the Hispanic Star Alliance is precisely the alliance, that we are not operating on our own. This is a platform to unify Hispanics and to be able to have a shared agenda. So a huge part of our own uh, objective is to unify the Hispanic community. And that means bringing all the incredible leaders that we have that are doing incredible individual work together so that we can amplify and create a platform for collective action. So I would say that 60% of the work that we do is to try to make sure that organizations that are dealing with like students and the engineers and, you know, like the Alphas, Prospanicas, Shipe, Unidos US, that all of those organizations can come together and have a, sp a space for coordination, for, um, for making sure that there's support among each other. And then we can put all of these organizations uh, on the same table with different partners, be global players, bringing Hispanics to Davos, bringing Hispanics to the United Nations, bringing Hispanics to the Cannes Advertisement Festival, or bringing corporations to the table where Hispanics are. 
I want to give kudos and uh, an incredible uh, uh, applause to those corporations that have been stepping up for the Hispanic community from the very beginning. Those uh, corporations that are talking to Hispanics, that are spending on Hispanics, that are investing in the community, that are not only going after our wallet, but are genuinely caring about our growth and our future. And those are the companies that we should be talking about. Those are the Procter & Gamble's, the IBM's, the PepsiCo's, the Shaq Lee's, the car yields of the world. Uh, and there's a number of organizations, we should be able to recognize them and say like, if I am a consumer, I want to make a choice. If I am an, an employee looking for a job, I want to make a choice uh, so that we can have also a universe of Hispanic friendly organizations. Thank you, Claudia, for joining us this afternoon. As you know, Bellas Fashionistas is your home and we're here uh, to continue to help elevate our Latino community. Where can people reach you? Hispanicstar.org. Just join us. Everything and everyone um, has a role to play. This is the time for Hispanics, and we can do it. Let's go. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to follow us on social media at Bellas Fashionistas and our media partner at BronxNet TV. To watch more of our programming, please visit our websites at bellasfashionistas.com and our media partner at bronxnet.org. Please be safe. Have a great day.